Good morning. All I'm saying is, if you're going to do a video called Morning Coffee, you have to have coffee. You have to. There's, there's no getting around it. It's the entire fucking point. We drink coffee, we talk. It's morning coffee. My, my lovely wife, Jody, she is uh, cleaning the coffee pot. And it takes time. We got a Cuisinart. It's not like the fanciest thing in the world, but it's it's got some 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 cool buttons on it and shit. So to clean it, there's a whole thing. It's it flashes up and it's got a little button that says, um, "You got to clean me now, motherfuckers, or you ain't getting coffee anymore." So you got to do it. And you take my least favorite substance in the world, vinegar. I hate vinegar. Oh my God. I hate the smell of it. It makes me sick. I, it, I can't take vinegar. Ooh, ah, I hate it. You got to take some vinegar and put it in there and you, you, there's a special combination of buttons too. It's not just press the clean button. You got to like press and hold and turn to the North and count to 20 or something. And then it takes like an hour to run through the clean cycle. And that's awesome. It cleans itself. That's hey, kudos to the technology there, but then it tastes like vinegar. So you got to run like 10 of them through before it's done. So <clears throat> I've been having a heck of a morning anyways. And I go in, I'm like, hey, I, I got to have my coffee. It's time for the morning coffee video. And Jody's like, I'm cleaning the coffee pot. So this right here, aside from being a cool ass mug, hey, thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate it. Um, aside from being a cool ass mug, this coffee was in my travel mug from, I believe, our jeeping trip. <laughs> And I am I heated it up in the microwave and now I'm drinking it. And I gotta say it's better than having no coffee at all. So we're starting with that. Um and yeah, I uh I planned on doing the morning coffee video at eleven AM this morning. I had everything prepped. It's a beautiful thing. I come down to the booth because I it's I need to get a new stream deck for upstairs in the control room. I'm tearing my stream deck up by transporting it back and forth. Um, so I, I, I've been doing all my videos from the booth here recently until I ordered another stream deck and it's not that expensive. I just need to order one, but I haven't yet. So I'm coming down to the booth and Max had a firmware update last night. It's a surface pro. You can kind of see it here and occasionally they have uh, firmware updates and it did after a session last night, I did it, <clears throat> I sat down this morning and the audio interface, the thing that makes my microphone come across so you all can hear me was not working. It's just blinking. It's not syncing up. I got no sound. I'm like, what the fuck? Is this a firmware update, really? And what's odd is my audio interface. It's it's from a company called RME. It's expensive. And the reason it's expensive is because the drivers are perfect. They never fuck up. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What the hell? A half hour later, I, I got a new driver down to everything. Half hour later, it turns out I didn't have it plugged in. Mm -mm. I have a dock that, that goes from Max down to here. There's a little dock where I plug the USB in. I didn't have the dock plugged in. Hmm. So a half hour later, a half hour of me trying every tech trick I know and, and really getting frustrated because I'm pretty good with tech. Turns out you just got to plug it in. So, yeah, that's been my morning. How are you? Um, It's been a couple weeks. It's because last weekend I was doing the... uh. The Jeepin' thing. Ta-da! This is a new shot from Picture Rock. I got to show you all here. Look at this. That is, count them four Jeeps in a row. That's taken from Spas Creek. I'm up on Picture Rock. I'm actually, I'm kind of down there, just kind of getting the, uh, kind of getting the, the good picture going on. We got Doc in the front. We got Ruby behind Doc. We got my nephew's new Jeep. Uh, it is the blue in there, and it's named Lucy. And uh, finally, in the back, we got the Jeep with no name, although there's a funny story about that. Um, so my, my brother Lonnie's Jeep, that's that's the white one way in the back. And that's actually my brother Lonnie kind of walking back to his Jeep there. Um, the entire time we got these radios, and we're talking back and forth and <clears throat> we cannot come up with a uh, Lonnie doesn't want to name his Jeep. He thinks it's cool to call it the Jeep with no name like Clint Eastwood and those spaghetti Western movies. So we're like going back and forth and uh, Jody's come up with all sorts of uh, potential names for it. Um, where, and, you know, it's it's like, um, you know, Sasquatch and, and Thunder from Down Under. I don't know what else she came up with. A bunch of them. 
as we're driving along in the forest on these trails this last trip, um, there are these signs up um, that just say DP. Now, I, I don't know what DP means in your world, but in my world, with the books I record, I know what DP means. Um, so I say this, there's like signs on occasionally on trees, like they're supposed to cut this tree down or something, but they're just occasionally just like a sign post up says DP. So I come across, I'm like, well, uh, anybody been double penetrating that tree there? So anyways, we've jokingly now started referring to my brother Lonnie's Jeep as DP. Um, which is, is, it's kind of funny in my book. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, now we've got the next thing that happened this week when we came back, we finally, our, our epic trying to find a personal trainer. We had hired a personal trainer through our YMCA about a month ago. I want to learn how to lift weights. I've been jogging for a while and I do a lot of calisthenics and a lot of yoga, but I, I want to add some some bulk, some some muscles on top of this. I'm skinny fat and I don't want to be. So, and uh, Jody could use some weightlifting as well. We're getting older, so we we want to. As you get older into your 40s and 50s, you start losing muscle mass, and I don't want to do that. So, hired a trainer like a month, month and a half ago. It was a really nice kid. His name was Kalik. Kalik didn't show up to one single fucking appointment, none whatsoever. Um, it just it, it, it didn't show. So finally. And I've been, he was in his 20s and I was in my 20s and I didn't show to a lot of appointments in my 20s. So I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. But finally, I'm like, look, dude, we paid a few hundred bucks here. Turns out that uh, he left, got fired, whatever, probably a combination of both. Um, so Jody and I went up to the front desk at the YMCA. We explained the situation. They said, oh, we'll get you another one. We're awful busy right now, but let's see what we can do. And they did. The dude's last name is Stonebreaker. Stone. You can't get much better for a weightlifting coach than that. We had our first appointment with him on Friday, and I thought it was just an evaluation appointment. Talk about what we want to accomplish. Let's see. Nope, nope, nope. We were out there lifting weights on Friday. Um, he's like, let's get to work. And he's a little stonebreaker, dude. And he's like, I don't know, five foot two and five foot two. He's a he's a muscular little man. So he got us out there, and, and it was a ton of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Next week, I think we're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday with the weightlifting training, and I'm excited. And because I have a trainer, I won't hurt myself, Jane. So I'm, I'm going to be good there. Um, so we got that going on. Next, we have, um, this is what I've spent a lot of my time doing over the course of the last couple of weeks when I wasn't jeeping. Um, we, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago in my morning coffee video that we missed a Tantor deadline by a day and it disturbed me and I switched systems out and this and that and the other. We've definitely landed on a, a, a new method of doing things around here. Um, it's using Office 365, which virtually everybody has, and uh, um, Microsoft Lists. And I've, I've been programming it behind the scenes. Dude, Microsoft's got a fucking going on. I'm a fan of their products anyways. Obviously, I like, I like Macs a lot with the Surface Pro, but this shit is is like a, a new level kind of stuff um there's something that they use behind the scenes <clears throat> it's uh they call it low code no code meaning that you don't have to be a programmer to do extra special functionality um and there there's a, a suite of programs called power programs or um, one of them is power apps you can actually you can make your own apps that you can use on your phone or on your computer um, there's Power Automate, which is where it's at. Power Automate is freaking amazing. Power Automate takes any program, and it doesn't have to be a Microsoft program, um, but like OneNote or Microsoft Lists or Outlook, and it allows you to just drag and drop uh, commands. If I get an email in my inbox, I want it to assign a task into my to-do list, and it'll do it. It's fucking awesome. So I've been doing a lot of that low-code, no-code shit behind the scenes over the last couple of weeks, and I've really built up kind of a cool-ass little system going on here. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited about it. It's freaking awesome. Um, it will allow me, Jody, and Trace to be able to communicate a bit more effectively on the projects moving forward. And I actually know what all projects I have booked now, which is absolutely stellar. Um, good morning, Brooke. Hey, Zach. How are you? Um, it's really, really cool. It's good shit. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, in fact, this morning, Tracy uh, reminded me that we have a video coming up with Andrew Gray this coming Tuesday. 
which I don't have on my calendar. And I said, hey, Trace, did you put that on the calendar? And she said, no, but let me do that. And she filled out a form and automatically populated on lists and then automatically went to my calendar. And now I know it's there. And I pull it up on my calendar and I've got my calendars. I get the video calendar, the audiobook calendar, my personal calendar, my gig calendar, all on top of each other so I can see everything all in one. Oh, it gives me the shivers in a good way. I'm excited about it. So that's what I've been doing over the course of the last... I don't know, uh, two weeks, uh, getting everything kind of laid out. This is the other thing I was doing. So, um, taxes, 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 taxes. I'm going to clear my throat before I start into this. So being an audiobook narrator is fantastic. This is the best job there is for somebody like me. Now, it takes a particular type of personality. I better get a drink of coffee. Three, four, five-day-old stale coffee. Uh, yeah. Um, it takes a particular type of person to be an audiobook narrator. Um, and I am that person. This is absolutely fucking perfect for me. I love it to death. That being said, if all I had to do, if all I got to do was sit in front of my computer and read books and act, dude, this would be a dream. This already is a dream gig, but that would be like the quintessential fuck. It, that would be, I think what they call it, that would be tits because tits are freaking awesome. Um, but that's not, it's maybe 25% of what I get to do. Maybe somewhere in there. Um, a, a couple days ago after the jeeping trips and everything else came back, I was supposed to start recording on Friday and it, comes to my attention, and Jody and I had known that this deadline was coming up with our taxes, but it comes to my attention that we got to get our books together fucking now. There is no waiting anymore. It's got to fucking happen. Now, I've been in business for a decade, somewhere in there. Um, I am I'm, I'm not, bookkeeping does not come naturally to me. Traditionally, what I've done for the first five or six years in business, I wouldn't keep a single goddamn record. At all. Then at the end of the year, when it came time for taxes, I would spend about between three days and a week gathering everything from all the checking accounts and credit cards and everything else, going through all the transactions, <coughs> using TurboTax, filing my own taxes. That's how I would do it. Um, it turns out that's not a good plan. So um, I, I decided a couple few years ago that we would hire a CPA. And there were some issues there. Some things got messed up. So then I hired a bookkeeper. There were some issues there. Things got messed up. It turns out that I just need to figure out how to fucking do it myself for a while longer. So um, Friday, I I was like, motherfucker, I got to do this. I dug in and I laid it all out. 2,000 transactions later that Jody and I had to go through because it was certainly a joint effort. It wasn't just me. Um, we got it categorized. I built out an Excel spreadsheet using all the cool little tools that I've just learned how to use in 365. And it's not that bad. It's fucking easy. I learned how to make my own profit and loss report. I'd never done that before. And it really wasn't that hard. Um, and I think I got it set up so it, as long as I spend a couple few hours a month maintaining it, I'll be on top of it. And it won't be such a stress for next year. That took me into about halfway through yesterday. Um, I think by 2 or 3 o'clock yesterday, I'd submitted everything and I went in the booth. Uh, we recorded a little bit yesterday and that was, oh, hey, before I forget, uh, tomorrow we got Carly Marie coming up on Talk to the Beard, which is fan-fucking-tastic. Join us at 5 p.m. JST. Um, but anyways, um, we we just finished up Blood Red Moon from, from Patty Logan. That's what we finished up in the booth. Um, that was before I went on the Jeep trip and that is fantastic. Now, I, I don't know when that is going to come out. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, there was kind of a, a snafu with ACX on this one. And it, but it's my fault. But bottom line is, normally when I submit a project through ACX to go to Audible, it only takes a couple few days before it releases. I'm not sure about this one. I don't know how long it's going to take. But it's done. Rest assured, it's done. It's out there. This is the first one in the spinoff series for the Prosper Woods Chronicles. This is Prosper Woods Wolves. It's by little Patty Logan, Blood Red Moon, and it's fucking hilarious. She did a great job on this. Now, I'm a huge fan of Patty Logan, and I'm a huge fan of the Prosper Woods Chronicles series. That's a great series. It's hilarious. I think this one is better done. Just 
better all the way around. It's, I think it's funnier. I, I think our favorite little blurbs at the beginning of each chapter, the, the uh, Prosper Woods Chronicles things, she did kind of a, a spinoff of that too, and I think it's better. Hard to believe, but it is. The characters, I think, are better developed. I, I, don't get me wrong, Prosper Woods Chronicles is great, but this one I think is better. That's just my opinion. I don't know a whole lot about these things. Um, <clears throat> this week, we started this yesterday. I got into the booth yesterday um, and jilted Jaron. Uh, the Foster Brothers, this is book one. I think it's going to be two or three books, maybe four books, somewhere in there. I don't really know. I haven't asked Nora yet. We love Nora Phoenix to death. That Dutch woman grabs my heart every time. Um, and this, this is, uh, well, when I started yesterday, Last week before I left for, I guess it was two weeks ago, before I left for my for my Jeep and trip, my in-ears that I normally use uh, went down on me. Just one side, the subwoofer went out on me. It's the third time that's happened. Um, and if you'll notice today, I'm wearing, wearing the headphones, old school style. Um, and there's a story behind that. So I, I was on my backup set of in-ears while I sent the, the good set, the really expensive set, the set that I love, the molds. I had to send them off to get fixed once again to California. And uh, I have a backup set, uh, a pair of Shures. They're not cheap by any stretch, and normally they do really well, but one side went out on them. So yesterday I sat down in the booth, we do all the pre-production voices, and just having one side in is driving me batshit crazy. So I finally flipped over to my my handy-dandy trusty Sonys. Um, I have three sets of these. I have one upstairs in the control room, Jody has one up in her little office, and I have this set as a backup to the backups. And... Uh, Truly, these things sound great. They always do. There are inherent issues for me. I don't know if you all wear headphones. I've been wearing them my entire life. I've been a musician, audio engineer since before I can remember remembering. And I've been wearing headphones every day in some way, shape, or form for the last 20 or 25 years. They're, I'm always, I've got them on for something or other. These things, they kind of fucking, they're comfortable for headphones, but they still... They get uncomfortable after a while, like a couple hours, fine. After that, they start to they start to drag drag you a little crazy. I I like to wear glasses sometimes instead of my contacts, and they get to be a pain in the dick with glasses after a couple couple hours. By the way, thank you very much. The nicest thing you can say to me is I'm having a good beard day. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> but as far as sound qualities go, these I think they're the 9506s, the Sony's, if I remember right. 7506s, sorry. Um, these are kind of the industry standard headphones that, um, like everybody at ACX has a set of these. Um, they're they're the most popular one. They're not very expensive. They're like a hundred bucks. Um, I suppose that is expensive. It, it's all relative, right? For a really nice pair of headphones, that's not very expensive. Um, they tweak the high end a little bit more than I'd like, and it's got kind of a low homage rating on it, so you really have to crank them up if you want to get them super loud. But once you get used to them, I've been using this same model number of headphones for 20 years. Once you get used to them, you know exactly how everything sounds on it and it works. But nothing compares to my in-ears. Let me, let me an ode to my in-ears for a moment. My dream, I don't know, the last 10, 15 years, I always wanted a set of custom molded in-ears. I love them. Oh my God, they're fucking perfect. They ain't cheap. What you got to do is you got to go to an ENT, uh, an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and they do a mold of your ear. They dump shit in there, like not actual shit, because that'd be kind of messy, wouldn't it? Um, it's like a silicone stuff, and they do a mold of your ear, and you get one for each side. They normally do two sets just to make sure. And then they send them off um, to the company that you have making your in-ears. Um, I use uh, Ultimate Ears Pro, uh, and they are fucking awesome. And they they custom mold a set of, of earbuds for you um, with, depending on how much money you spend, uh, you know, anywhere between $500 to $2,500. I know it's a lot. It's a fucking lot. But trust me. For somebody like me, it's worth it. Now, if you're just using these to watch YouTube and shit, no, don't do that. That's stupid. But if you're an audio engineer like me, you can you can get these ears. And you ever had, like, your earbuds fall out while you're working out? Or, um, or you know, they sound good, but you can kind of still hear stuff in the background. And in-ear molds do not do any of that. They don't fall out. You actually got to get your fingers, fingers behind them and pry them, pop them out. They ain't coming out. It's a perfect seal every time. So when you put them in, um, you've heard of noise-canceling headphones, that sort of thing. 
those actually put white noise into your ears. These, you don't need white noise. It just cuts off the world because it's a perfect seal around there. It's fucking perfect. They sound amazing. And they are completely accurate, as accurate as you can possibly get. For one, because there's no air in between you and your speaker. It's right next to your eardrum. And two, because of the quality of the neodymium drivers that are in them. They're about as good as you can get. Um, depending, depending on the model you get, some of them uh, tweak the sound a bit to make it sound better. Others just keep the sound flat and they have a flat response. I got the flat response ones, so I can trust them. What I hear in them is what I'm going to get out. Bottom line, they're amazing, and they're in California right now getting fixed again for the third time in two and a half years, which is kind of depressing to me. I don't really know what's going on with them, but hopefully they'll figure it out at least. They paid for the shipping. They're, it's under warranty still. It shouldn't be, but they're doing it anyways. So there is that. So yeah, that's what I got going on. <laughs> this should be called the rambling coffee episode. Um, finally, we got uh, coming up after um, um, Jilted, we have Stronghold by Anna Ashley. This is a Tantor project, so I don't know when it's going to come out, um, but hopefully relatively soon. This is in the uh, uh, Vino and Veritas series, and it's like I think it's what is it? book number 14 in, in the Vino and Veritas series. This is the series that keeps narrators employed. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Um, this will be my first one, I think, that I've ever done for Anna Ashley, but we have more stuff coming up from her. She actually picked us up for a, a new series that she has coming up. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Dads of Stillwater. But let me, let me, let me double check that just to make absolutely certain. I'm going to use my handy-dandy list. <laughs> yeah, Dads of Stillwater. And we are start starting that series for her at the end of April. So, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on here. Finally, we got coming up, In the Wings. Thank you once again to Lisa for getting me this graphic. I do appreciate it. Um, and we have a uh, boy issues command and care book one by Morticia Knight coming up after the stronghold book. Uh, then we have switch hitter hit and run book one by EM Lindsay. There's two new clients for us right there. And then finally we have Hunter's shadow Hunter's Creek book two coming up by Victoria Sue. That one's actually a little bit behind. I'm going to slide it in there into the schedule in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's what we got coming up. Anyways, um, I was supposed to be starting recording right now, one minute ago, but I'm going to, I'm going to have a cup of actual coffee, not three, four, five day old reheated. Um, and I'm going to make sure I have something in my belly. So my belly isn't flipping out. So I would say it's probably going to be closer to one o'clock, somewhere in that range. We're going to get started back in the booth. We'll be in discord again. Um, and thank you for hanging out guys. I love you. Thank you for being patient with me. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll be working and, uh, over the next few weeks, we're going to be right on task and on schedule. Uh, no more Jeep and trips until the end of April. So we'll be rocking it out here at least five, six days a week. Have fun. I love y'all. I will see you, uh, well, hopefully in discord. If not, I'll see you tomorrow at 5 PM for uh talk to the beard with Carly Marie.